What up, cowboy fans and YouTubers? It's that VA Dallas Cowboy fan. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting down below. I make these videos for me and you, and Lord knows they're gonna have to be a little therapeutic, because as you can see, my arm is currently in a sling. Uh, nothing major. Uh, should actually be fine. I just happened to pull something in my back side area uh, when I lifted up my son today uh, he was having a bit of a meltdown and uh, I tried to take him away from the situation and I must have pulled something but uh, that's not going to stop me from going to work or making another video today uh, I just wanted to get on here and uh knock out some of yesterday's notes that came out during our off day and knock out some training camp bits from today. Uh, the major news is that right tackle Leo Collins was in a quote unquote major car accident today this morning. Uh, somebody had cut him off and they said his injuries are minor, but he missed practice today. And they say he'll be fine. Uh, also, leaving practice early was left tackle Tyron Smith. Uh, they said it was an injury, but there are differing reports that if it is an injury, one, he was uh, helped out with a medical trainer. But one person said they could not see anything noticeably wrong with him. So... You got one saying there's noticeably nothing wrong and others saying there could be something. But either way, they say he'll be fine. Uh, nothing to be too alarmed about. And uh, it's starting to seem like this is happening every year now with our offensive linemen. Is that they are being injured in training camp before the season starts. And then we're mismatching, hodgepodging the offensive line. And they're going against our uh, number one defensive line. And it's not looking too good at all. Because you have the likes of uh, Wyatt Miller and Brandon Knight taking the bulk of the snaps. And because they've been third string, fourth string practice wide guys for the years they've been on the team, they're getting the butts handled in practice. That's never a good thing. Uh, you'd like to have at least some kind of even playing field. So people can get good experience. I mean, in the end, this is great experience for them too. But it's not helping the defense get any better if they're running over guys all the time. Because they know this is not going to happen every week in the season. But uh, those are some observations. Jordan Lewis actually had to leave uh, practice early due to a left ankle injury. Uh, he did not return. That kind of hurts our, uh, well, it doesn't really hurt our depth, but he's a guy who's been on the field and can make plays that we've seen in the past. And losing him now to an ankle injury, depending on, you know, regular ankle, a sprain, high ankle sprain, a broken ankle, who knows until later. Uh, hopefully it's something that's uh, healable in a couple weeks. Uh, just stay off of it for a little while. So I have to see how that goes. Uh, Griffin to Poe, uh, Everson Griffin and Don Terry Poe were seen in full preds at practice. They did not participate in any team or individual drills. So they're still getting acclimated back to the speed of the game and, uh, you know, learning our playbook and everything before they get jumped into the fire, so to speak. Uh, Greg the leg zero line is now 12 for 12 and field goals made. Uh, the longest field goal he made was 44 yards out. Uh, I think his distances today was six for six, 34, no, 33, 36, 38, 42 and 44. I think those were the six makes he made today. And 
if you're keeping score at home, those were the kind of kicks that Brett Maher could not make with some of those chip, simple chip shots. He can make stuff from 30 and in and 50 and above. But between 30 and 50, he was iffy. But so far, Greg is uh, looking like he's putting last year's uh, decline behind him. And he's healed up and he's ready to go. And I know John Fossil is loving this. I uh, saw his interview yesterday after practice. And he seems excited to get Greg uh, back out there, back to his uh, usual ways of kicking. He can't wait. But that's really a bunch of the uh, camp notes today that I have seen early. Uh, I'm sure there's more stuff that's going to come out later on in the day. Uh, Mike McCarthy's interview he had this uh, this morning. He talked about uh, Alden Smith. Uh, they've asked, how does he look out there on the field? And he'd say, you know, if he didn't know who he was and that he was out of football for five years, he'd have been like, yo, who's that number 58 guy? And basically, he's hyped because Alden Smith does not look like he's out of position, he's out of place, or that he's been out of league for five years. So that's pretty good news to hear. Uh, as we are still awaiting Randy Gregory's uh, reinstatement or non-reinstatement and uh, making sure the rest of the line is as healthy as possible and ready to go when the season starts after losing McCoy. And speaking of McCoy, uh, he, he was in his hospital room after surgery. He sent out a couple tweets and videos uh, basically saying that... Uh, our young bucks on the line, he ain't going nowhere. He ain't left. He may not be with the team, but he's always available to talk. Uh, he said, ask any of his old teammates in Carolina or Jacksonville that you can call him anytime to uh, get any kind of critiques about uh, technique or anything going on or just to uh, have somebody to talk to. He's always there for his teammates. And uh, this ain't the end of him trying to help these kids uh, coming up this year. So that's good news to hear that he's still willing to work with our uh, uh, Gallimore and Hill and Riley and A and guys like that, even though he can't physically be in the building. He's still available to them. So that's good news to hear. Uh, Kellen Moore, he was giving the reins as OC. Uh, Mike McCarthy has pretty much given him full control of the offense. Uh, he wanted to step back and step away and let the offense be the offense because, uh, as he said himself, when he put himself in that position in Green Bay, he started seeing uh, that the offense was being uh, basically worn down. Uh, he wasn't giving it his all because he was being head coach and offensive coordinator and he just wasn't getting everything to the offense that he thought he should have been given to the offense. That's why he stepped away from play calling and just letting Kellen Moore do what he's got to do and put his full attention towards that while McCarthy coaches the coaches, basically. Uh, he said they do inter uh, meetings at 5 a.m., where they just get to know each other, they uh, spitball, they share each other's ideas and see what they can come up with, offense and defense. And it, they appreciate having the minds in the room to do that kind of thing. It's healthy, it's uh, open, they're sharing ideas. And this is the kind of stuff you didn't hear about with the last regime. You might've heard uh, or seen some videos back in the day where Garrett had his uh, coaching staff and they'd be in a meeting but you didn't really hear too much coming from those assistant coaches you didn't hear anything coming from these coordinators like talking about to make anybody better so this is a good thing to hear that they're listening to each other and uh, spreading ideas around making each other better you know that's good to hear uh, let's see Leighton Vanderesh 
says that they're doing more practices. Uh, they're having practice periods taken out specifically just for creating turnovers. He said they're doing all types of turnovers. They're learning the hammer, the uh, fist, the hitting the helmets. Uh, hit, do it any way to create turnovers. There's a period specifically made out for them to just do that. And he said that's something that they've not done before. And he loves it. That they're actually dedicating more time to turnovers specifically. And just having that is something that is he feels is going to make this team better. That now they're focusing on techniques to do this kind of thing. And as you saw in years past, it looked like they had no clue how to do this. When you see defenses going against us, you see guys trying to punch the ball out every chance they got. They may miss a tackle, but they knock the ball out, you know? That's something we didn't do. And you barely saw us wrap up fully or try to hit the ball out. Because you'd see one guy making a tackle and the rest of the guys are just standing around. It just started to look ridiculous in the end. Uh, let's see. I already talked about that. Talked about that. Uh, some rules coming out from the NFL about this upcoming season. They said there's going to be no sideline reporters, no pregame reporters allowed. Uh, they're banned. So they're going to have to do their stuff from a different place. Uh, there's going to be no mascots like Rowdy, who's been around since 1996. He won't be out there. Uh, and there will be, for the first time in Cowboys history, no cheerleaders out there to cheer on their football counterparts. So it's going to be a little different on the sidelines. It's social distancing and everything. If you've seen some of the basketball stuff, you know uh, some of the uh, hockey stuff, how they keep them apart while they're on the sidelines. It'll probably look more like that. Uh, you're going to have some people on the sidelines who like equipment people and stuff. Going to have the face masks and coverings on the whole time. So it's going to be a strange look for the uh, sidelines this year, but it's to be expected. Uh, let's see. We have... A couple pet cats coming out from blogging the boys that they uh, looked into and said they're showing up early in training camp. Uh, there's a couple guys that they see early that could make a push, uh, especially the, in the wide receiver group. Uh, they're definitely seeing some guys that are trying to make waves, uh, starting with Cedric Wilson. Uh, he's looking like he's more of the fourth wide receiver on the depth chart right now because of the plays he's making. Uh, he's got that big body, and if he can stay healthy, he might actually make the cut this year. Uh, for seasons past, he's been injured or something has happened to him where he's not been able to really contribute like he's wanted to or the team wanted him to, but it looks like that's behind him, and he's starting to prove why we picked him up. So I like to hear that. Uh, next is John Vay Johnson. He's done some pretty good work with Andy Dalton and Dak Prescott making some plays. And uh, Ventel Bryant is lumped into that same category that they're doing a couple plays where they're connecting with their quarterbacks. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Bryant actually made a play over Reggie Robinson. So that kind of made Robinson look a little bad, but he's a rookie and he's got to get used to the game speed. Ventel has been here for a couple seasons now. So he's used to this. And uh, it depends on if they keep five or six wide receivers on the depth chart. But uh, either way, John Vay, Johnson, and Vintel Bryan look like they're battling it out for one spot. Uh, the only knock on both of those guys is the same thing, and is that they uh, they have to be more consistent. Uh, Johnson, especially, he had a case of the dropsies every time last year. When he was open for a play, he'd drop a pass. And that's what they're looking for right now is that he's going to need to be a lot more consistent. And uh, he had a shot last year that they liked him. You saw him in a couple games. But then he headed to IR, and that was pretty much his season. So it's going to probably be coming down to those two guys to round out the depth chart along with uh, Devin Smith, who we haven't heard too much from. Uh, next, we have the linebacker Francis Bernard. Uh, as we've heard, 
he's been doing some pretty good things in training camp. Uh, he's leading the pack right now with two interceptions in team or in, uh, in team drills. And uh, for him, he's like the this year's Luke Gifford. Looks special in training camp in preseason if we had one. But can he translate it over to the regular season? Right now, he's trying to uh, beat his way onto the depth chart because he does have uh, Joe Thomas, I think, still there. Uh, Luke Gifford and uh, Van Der Esch, Jalen Smith, Sean Lee, and everybody at the top. And he's just trying to see if he can get his way into the bottom of that list to be a backup to any of those guys. So we'll have to see. A lot of people are liking him. They're liking the way he plays and uh, is showing up to the coaches, and they like that. Tony Pollard, obviously, uh, they can't say too much about him because uh, they can't talk about individual uh, formations and stuff with him, but they know that he's looking pretty good this year. They're excited because he's actually in on plays for once. Uh, they've had him in the backfield with Zeke a couple times, so it looks like he's going to get a lot more action than he's used to, and that's a good thing because he looks like he can do some things, and we're finally going to get to see that unleashed, hopefully. Uh, next up is Tristan Hill, who uh, Tyrone Crawford called Trigger Trey. That's his nickname, and uh, he's looking like he's gotten better. Mike McCarthy has praised him for uh, saying he's asking lots of questions. Uh, he's looking for extra work, and he's trying to put it in and uh, make himself look good. And he's looked like he's matured since last season. Maybe that's a Marinelli thing. Maybe it's not. Uh, but he's definitely looked like he's came into this year knowing he's had to grow up. And they're loving that about him right now. Uh, last but not least, we have the offensive lineman that was picked up in place of uh, McCoy. Uh, he's a former XFL offensive lineman. Uh, his name is Pace Murphy. He's 26 years old. Uh, came out of Northwestern State. He's 6'6", 308 pounds. Uh, he was drafted, actually. Uh, no, he was an undrafted free agent in 2016. And he was picked up by the L.A. Rams. Uh, he showed up in two games that season. But since then, he's never made another active game day roster. He was on the practice squads for the Chiefs and the uh, Chiefs and the 49ers. But since then, they both cut him and he ended up in the XFL until that folded earlier this year. Until then, he was just kind of floating around until the Cowboys picked him up. So, we'll have to see what he's got. Uh, I think the Cowboys did their due diligence because he was actually drafted in the XFL by the Dallas Renegades. So, because he was in their backyard, pretty sure they've had a uh, chance to eye him out and see if he's uh, going to be worth the uh, pickup. So we'll have to see if he can uh, make the squad or push some of these other guys for uh, depth purposes. All right. Now, last but not least today, I know this video has gone long-winded. I wanted to give some shout-outs to some guys. Uh, Cowboys X Factor. I wanted to give him a shout-out. He comes through and... Uh, He's always asking questions. He's always wanting some knowledge. Uh, that's good. That's great. He likes keeping up on the team. And uh, he's always there to uh, leave a comment. He's a great follower. You can follow him on Twitter. Uh, he used to have a channel. He doesn't currently have one, but you can follow him on Twitter. And uh, Cowboys Fan Talk. Great guy. Just started following him. Great information. Uh, gives his opinion. Straightforward. No BS. Uh, sounds like a great guy. Give him a follow on YouTube. And uh, check these guys out. And of course, you always know 
Mark Holmes, E2 Blue, Shango, uh, Cowboys 1980, My Cowboys Family and everybody, DMV Cowboys. It's great to give shout outs to all the other YouTubers who go out here above and beyond like Law Nation, Bosch, Okoye, Foot, to bring you some of the best content out there. You got uh, these guys making videos that are better than some of the crap ESPN be putting out, especially with those guys commentating. And it's just about us cowboys. It's great stuff. Give all these guys a follow. Click on them. Uh, they do, they should be on my page. If you click for uh, people I subscribe to or current channels I follow, check them out but that's all i got for today if anything else happens you know we'll get it to you eventually hope y'all have a good one it's almost it's pre-friday pre-tgif we're almost to the weekend and hopefully this feels better <laughs> all right y'all take care out there almost to work va dallas cowboy fan out.